Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Thanks very much for sticking around for this part. This is a really short bit, and it's similar to a thing that I did with um, the MAPS group at our conference last June, or whatever that was. Um, and it's little short things. I mean, going to conferences and just working in a lot of different places, I've learned a lot of really cool things of just, oh, wow, how about that? Um, Melinda O'Malley told me one, and it was, Kindergarten children in particular are absolutely sure they're whispering and they're talking out loud. And one of the things that she did with them was to show the difference between speaking. So everybody put one hand on your neck so that you can feel your voice box. Okay, whisper your first name. Okay. Now keep your hand there and say your first name aloud. Can you feel the difference? I thought that was really cool and it's something that little children can do. And then that gives them an idea. You can just give them the signal and they can see if they're whispering or speaking out loud. <laughs> I'll scream it good, Krista. <laughs> yeah, and that feels different too. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, the second one is, I uh, learned this before most of you were even born, you've got a theater full of kids who are really, really excited, and this was before microphones were used a lot, um, and Osceola Sexton said, put an image at the zenith, everybody's head goes up, and it cuts off airflow, and you can't yell if you're looking at the, ce at the ceiling, up at the zenith. This is something, because I was trying this on my office mate and she's sitting there, I can yell with my voice that with it. So I guess it's possible, but at least it does give people um, an idea. It's something else to look at and it, you can maintain order a bit better. I'm really hoping people have other things to add into this too, because I got one last one and it's analogies. And probably everybody has, you know, like their favorite analogy. Um, I remember the, the time that I learned, if you take the moon, and peel off the surface of the moon like an orange and squash it down flat. It's the size of Africa, which I've had people say, boy, the moon's really small. <laughs> Somebody else will say, boy, Africa's really big. So depending on the um, perspective, I guess, that's one. And the last one I have is the Milky Way, the number of stars in the Milky Way there are enough stars, I did the math on this, for, to give every human being on earth 40 stars. That's about how many stars there are in the Milky Way. Amy, can you do your audio or your um, getting people's yeah. attention one? So uh, what, one thing I do to get everybody's attention um, when I, before I bring them into the theater or sometimes at the beginning when they're sitting in the theater and they're still talking to each other and not looking at me yet, um, I just start with, instead of screaming, hey, uh, if you can hear my voice, clap once. And the ones who can hear me clap one time. If you can hear my voice, clap two times. And then you get a couple more people who clap. And then I go into bigger motion. If you can hear my voice, put your hands in the air. If you can hear my voice, put your hands on your head. And that by then, more and more and more people are doing the actions that I'm asking and I'm not screaming to get their attention. And I can say, okay, now put your hands down. And hello, my name is Amy. <laughs> for that. Thanks. One thing I found out in teaching virtually um, the, the last couple of weeks, I'm in the habit of saying, touch your ears, touch your nose, touch your chin, which I'm hesitant to do during these COVID times. So we're doing a lot of touch your head, touch your shoulders, touch your stomach, because not touching faces is a thing now. Thank you. Yeah, we used to do the voice operated lights. I've talked about this before where I was, if it gets too noisy in here, the lights are just gonna come on and there's nothing I can do about it. So we'd <laughs> use the cove lights in the fixed dome or we would have the, um, when I was teaching with a star lab, we'd use the side lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was always one of my favorites. They learn pretty quick to keep their voices down if they wanted it dark. Mm -hmm. If I wanted people just to observe something for a few seconds, I would play some music. Mm. 
and say, listen to the music and see what you can see, you know, whatever. Krista, how do you use cove light signals? Um, if there, so there's a couple ways I've tried it. If it starts getting too noisy, like you said, you can mm. put up like the red lights or if there's um, a moment for everyone to discuss or talk when it's coming time to end, you can kind of flicker the dome light, like a, you know, like a movie theater. Like mm, okay. I, I notice a lot, you know, for the public shows, once I take away the messaging and start to bring all the extra lights down, the audience tends to just quiet down. Like they know something's coming. Um, mm -hmm. And I've always found that very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I've done for getting people's attention is using the Minolta, so the big robot in the middle. So if it starts at the top and I bring it down slowly, they're like, oh, something's about to happen. So it's just sort of that visual transition and then like start turning off extra lights before, like even if we're not using the Minolta projector, we're sort of using it as a something's happening. I'm curious about Jackie, um, when you're doing uh, a live virtual presentation like when you were doing distance learning in a classroom did anything work or did you just have to rely on the teacher to to contain the kids in the classroom um it was a combination if i actually was doing the live stream i was assuming the teacher had um the class but like after if we did like a turn and talk or i had them write down their ideas um i would either have um uh, I would actually probably take down the slides and make myself large. So that way there was kind of a visual cue of, hey, something's happening now. And I would say something and then I'd actually give myself probably about 10 seconds and say that again for like, because uh, we did get some uh, feedback from teachers when we were first starting this, that if we just went straight into like the next talking point or the next direction, Half the time students were still talking and you couldn't hear it. So giving that space and, or a visual cue of like, hey, everybody come on back and then giving that actual time for them to come back. Um, if I actually had a class in front of me virtually, um, I would probably do some of the similar things. Like if you can hear my voice, put your hand on your head. If you hear my voice, hand on your shoulders. That's also another way I took polls uh, with students is, um, all right, if you think um, Jupiter is the largest planet, put your hand on your head. If you think Saturn is the largest planet, put your hand on your shoulders. If you think uh, Uranus is the biggest planet, I'm just making this up by the way, uh, put your hand on your heart. And so that way I could visually see um, how many students are uh, choosing what um, instead of the chat box where it just kind of gets all messy. And also if students, um, if it's actually a full class, I can hardly hear them. Usually teachers use really bad speakers and microphones. So <laughs> I went for like the visual cue. So, okay, I can see that. Mm -hmm. That helps in a mic check as well. So if you can hear me, put your hands on your head. You know, the te the, <laughs> watching that student's hands all go to the head and the teacher's still fussing around with the, <laughs> the phone or whatever. Yeah. Brian, would you do that hot and cold thing, please? The hot and cold thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what is she talking about? So, um, yeah, this is from the thing you did at Virtual Maps, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, quick kind of short demonstration about a relationship uh, between temperature and pressure. All right, so uh, everybody take your hand, hold your hand out in front of your, your, your mouth, and I want you to blow cold air on your hand, okay? Everybody's blowing cold air on your hand, right? Okay, now I want you to do the same thing, but I want you to blow hot air on your hand, okay? Okay. So you, your face is making two different, you're shaping your mouth in two different ways. Now I want you to try something. Can you form a circle with your mouth, but somehow still blow hot air? You can't do it. Just like you can't open your mouth wide and blow cold air, right? It's a big circle. Right, you can make like a really big circle, right? So you can kind of see how the shape you form with your mouth 
takes the air you are blowing out of your mouth and gives it a certain amount of pressure, which also changes the temperature of it. So just a quick demonstration, kind of like, uh, April, were you doing the, the whisper thing right before my phone died? Mm -hmm. Nice. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, it's a similar little, uh, little quick demo, similar to that one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Similar to what Jackie was saying about full body motions when you're doing a lesson and, and the whole class is there in a thumbnail for you to see. Um, I did one program this past year where we were talking about different kind of landforms and events and things like that. And do they happen quickly or slowly? So we'd look at um, a glacier on earth and a glacier on Mars. Do glaciers form fast or slow? And instead of having them type in the chat, I had them wiggle their hands if, if it's quick motion or um, put their arms out to the side like they're slow, you know, slowing down if it's something that happens over a really long period of time. So we would talk about like um, landslides. Landslides are quick, they can happen in seconds. Um, you know, but glaciers, erosion, those kinds of things are longer happening events. So the big hand motions are super, super useful in a large group event. Mm -hmm. And I know when I've done one classroom at a time, when we were talking about um, molecular motion, you know, everybody stand up and you're going to walk in place really slowly. Okay, that's a solid. Okay, now you're going to walk a little bit faster, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's a liquid. Now you're going to go up and down really fast, really fast, really fast. That's the gas. And then you call out gas, liquid, gas, solid. And it burns energy for 10 or 15 seconds, and then everybody's ready to sit down again. We used to do that with our, with our hands. So the gas would be just barely moving. The liquid would be moving more. And then the, the gas, and then, oh, the solid would be barely moving. I guess that gas, I'm really tired. Um, and then the, the gas would be moving. We're like, be careful of your neighbor. And then we'd have them, yeah, we'd switch. It was fun. John, Harrison, husband, take your hands until your fingers fly off. I've never tried that. <laughs> <laughs> That's one time only thing. 